right? That is to say, take care of your business incrementally and don't always assume success. I'll just read a couple of more with you. Uh, this is a famous one um, for its interesting and somewhat controversial implications, the eagle and the arrow. It runs like this. An eagle was soaring through the air when suddenly it heard the whiz of an arrow and felt itself wounded to death. Slowly it fluttered down to the earth with its light blood pouring out of it. Looking down upon the arrow with which it had been pierced, it found that the heft of the arrow had been feathered with one of its own plumes. Alas, it cried as it died. And now the moral, we often give our enemies the means for our own destruction. We think, of course, of Icarus not listening to his father. Daedalus tell him about staying away from the heat of the sun and falling into the ocean. We think, of course, of Achilles and his wound to his heel that he does not anticipate. That notion that oftentimes this is the nature of our lives. Of all these great stories, then, I'll finish with one that's very, very famous, and yet let's go ahead and share it nonetheless. The Milkmaid and Her Pail. Patty the milkmaid was going to market, carrying her milk in a pail on her head. As she went along, she began calculating what she would do with the money she would get for the milk. I'll buy some fowls from Farmer Brown, said she, and they will lay eggs each morning, which I will sell to the parson's wife. With the money that I get from the sale of these eggs, I'll buy myself a new beautiful frock and a beautiful hat. And when I go to market, all the young men will come up and speak to me. Polly Shaw will be that jealous, but I don't care. I shall just look at her and toss my head like this. As she spoke, she tossed her head back, and the pail fell off, and all the milk was spilled. And so she had to go home and tell her mother what had occurred. Ah, my child, said the mother, do not count your chickens before they are hatched. Of course, the other rendering of this has often been, don't cry over spilled milk. That is to say, mind your, mind your P's and your Q's and all of that. Well, these are, of course, stories that will be significant in the history of the storytelling, fable-telling motif. Again, we said, they are clearly designed to be propedutic. That is to say, instructional. You're supposed to learn something from them. Now, as we get into our next study, we'll take a look at the stories that are compiled by the famous Grimm brothers, and we'll, we'll see some similarities to those stories and to the fables of Aesop. We'll obviously see some dissimilarities as well. I hope this will lead you to go online, find more of the Aesop's fables, read them, and begin to ask questions about their significance, their instructional significance. I hope this has been a good introduction to you at least. Thank you.